So I was out on the Savage River this weekend, mid-afternoon on Saturday, and I couldn't have asked for a better day. And you know what I'm talking about. It's warm, but not too hot. The water is crystal clear. It's perfect. Not too high or too low. It's flowing just right. And I get to the river and I think, this is going to be an amazing day. Then three hours later, haven't caught a fish. And there's really no explanation. Sometimes a river can just humble you. And the only saving grace on Saturday was that I talked to a couple other fishermen and they hadn't caught anything either. So that was my Saturday. On Sunday morning, I need to be back out on the tractor. I got another field waiting for me. But I just couldn't do it. I couldn't leave for the weekend with that big skunk hanging over my head. So I get up at sunrise, head back to the river, tell myself two hours. Two hours of fishing, and then I'll get back to work. And the day before, I had been playing around with some experimental flies, some different nymphs and streamers. But if I've only got two hours on the water, I want to go with an old faithful, my go-to fly. And this fly, the CDC Elk Hair Caddis, I realize that I've never tied it for the channel. And the only reason I can think of is that it's really just too simple. It's got two materials and it takes you about three or four minutes to tie. And since this will be a short tying video, I do have some footage at the end of this of me fishing this thing this weekend. But before that, I wanna tell you why I think this fly is so successful. It's not a high floater, but it really is a good floater. You can fish this thing in fast riffled water, but you can also fish it in slow, smooth as glass water where the fish get a really long look at the fly. And I've had fish watch this thing drift over their head, they turn around and follow it three or four feet downstream, and then go up and take it. And that just doesn't happen with every fly. But I think why it happens with this one is the elk hair keeps it afloat, but the body of the hook and the CDC sit right down in the surface film, and the CDC just flutters with just enough movement to really make this thing look alive. And one last note, this is not a pretty fly. I'm not gonna put a picture of this on my Instagram. It's not gonna go in any shadow box, but I can tell you this thing is always in my fly box. So there it is in the vise, my simple CDC Elk Hair Caddis. Not a beautiful fly, certainly buggy and fuzzy looking. And I'll tie this on a 12, 14, 16, or 18. This is a 14. 14s and 16s are probably my most common. And I do use brown thread. This is 70 denier. I'll put a base down here to where the, about where the barb would have been. And the first thing I'm gonna catch in is a natural CDC or a tan. And CDC comes in different quality. And even within the same bag, you'll have feathers of all kinds of different, um, you know, fiber densities and, and barb length. So just find one that you think is gonna give you the right density and then the right um, length. And if it's too long, I wouldn't worry about that because we can certainly trim it or pluck it when we're done. So go ahead and catch that in and take your thread up here to where we're gonna stop the body, just a little bit back from the eye. That's where we're gonna catch in the, the elk hair. And I will use my spring-loaded tackle pliers for this and I'll just grab it. And something to keep in mind here, if you want it really fuzzy and with a lot of uh, fibers and barbs coming down, put these wraps close together. If you don't want it as fuzzy, then just, you know, spread them out a little bit and you'll put down fewer fibers. So after you get up here, look at that, it's pretty fuzzy already. Let's go ahead and catch this off. And you know what, I let that slip out, but can we recover? Sure can, I'm just gonna pull that tight right there and now put a couple extra wraps and I think we'll be just fine. So we do need to snip this barb off right there, that, not a barb, but you know, the that stem right there. And I'm gonna put a few smooth or loose wraps just to try to smooth that little nub off right there. And that's it, we've got quite a bit of CDC here. Pull it out, take a look at it. That's, you know, about how much I want but obviously those fibers are way too long and you can trim them. What I usually do, I just grab a few and then just pinch them. Pinch them and pluck them out until I get about the right density right there. And that's about what I want. I can always take more off when I get to the river. Um, can't put them back, but you can always take them off. So the next thing we wanna do, grab a medium sized clump of elk hair and you can use deer hair for this too. And take a look at this. This is pretty long. Look at all that fur and fuzz all this under fur right there. 
You can either grab your brush and pull it out, but what I do, I just snip off that half inch right there. And now I've cut off all the, the under fur and I don't even have to worry about it. I'll just put this piece in my stacker and a couple of wax and it should have stacked pretty well. Let's see, yep, that looks fine right there. And I'm gonna catch this in about to the hook bend. So right there, you can see the hook bend through that CDC transfer hands. And I will put one wrap just around the, the clump of hair and then the second wrap around the hair and the hook. Still not tight and I haven't let go of the wing with my material hand. Now the third wrap can be a little bit tighter. And I will put these wraps down about as tight as I am comfortable using this 70 denier thread. So I've got several wraps right there. And what a lot of people will do, and what I used to do, I'd put a few wraps up through there. But you know what? I don't even do that anymore. I just lift it up and then maybe tighten my thread up right there and just put several wraps right here. And I'm not gonna whip finish it up there. I'm gonna whip finish it right back here at this band right there. So a couple extra wraps right here. Now you wanna lift all this up and either grab your scissors or if you've got one of these razor blades right here, just grab all these up and then just put your blade right there above the eye and slide it up. Now, if you didn't get them all, you're gonna to need to do your scissors anyway, but that only takes a second. And there we go. Now let's put a whip finish right there where that band is. And if you want to, put a drop of head cement or super glue just right there on the underside, let it wick through that, those thread wraps. I haven't even been doing that. I would leave this exactly as it is and put it in my box just like this. And again, if I'm on the river and I need it to be a little less fuzzy and shaggy, I'll just pluck some of these out and then you still got a, a great fishable fly. So that's it, super easy tie, but this thing can be amazingly effective. All right, good morning. It's about 8 a.m. I'm on the Savage River, just downstream of the Allegheny Bridge up there. Um, hadn't seen any bugs out yet, uh, so I'm just throwing my little tan, small CDC elk air caddis, one of my go-to flies if I'm just prospecting. I'm using a two-weight, pretty long leader. Got some kind of fast water there behind me. Uh, you can see that. It's not very deep, so I'm crouched down kind of stealth mode right here beside a rock, but I've got plenty of room to back cast, so it's not a hard stretch of water to fish. Let's see if we can't pull something out of here. There's one. He's going kind of deep. Not real big, but we'll net him. There you go, little nine incher, pretty little fish. So here's an interesting little spot that I like to hit. That is the Allegheny footbridge right there. So where I'm parking access is right behind me. And a lot of people I think don't fish this because they think everybody fishes it. It's kind of like Yogi Bear used to say that nobody goes there anymore, it's too crowded. But I've had some luck here on this stretch right behind me and all the way up to the bridge. Fishing streamers, dry flies, nymphs, really everything. It's kind of deep right here and it's a little bit riffly, so you don't have to be that stealth. But uh, yeah, it's, I like to give it a shot here and I've caught a couple of big ones in this stretch over the last few years. So. I'm gonna be, I'm still throwing this CDC El Caracatus. Let's give it a shot in this little stretch right here. There's one. Little guy, but he's a jumper. <laughs> Look at that. It's about four jumps. We'll put him in a net just to take it easy on him. There you go, about an eight inch little fish, kind of 
pretty. Look at those bright orange spots. Get back in there, buddy. All right, just a couple more minutes and then I gotta get on out of here. There's one right in front of that submerged rock. How big is this guy? He's, he's okay. Putting a nice bend in this two weight here. Try to keep him upstream of me. Let's get the net for this guy just to take it easy on him. This is a brook trout. What do you know? Rarely get these guys this far downstream in the main stem. But look at this, pretty little eight to nine inch brook trout. I believe that's a buck. You see the, oh, sorry buddy. Oops, he's okay. He landed right there in the soft water. Well, that's it everybody. Goodbye to the Savage River this time. Now I gotta head back to the farm and do some real work. So thanks for watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.